be talking about today, if I can get it to show up correctly, is statistics. But are statistics really interesting, you ask? Well, I think so. So, before we get into all that jazz and talk and dance, why don't I show you what I'm rocking today? <clears throat> so right now we are going with the the wicked the Wick T or the Wick on top of the H Cigar VT inbox. Don't know if you remember this. This is probably one of the greatest mods ever created. Let me just show it to you. Close enough? Cool. And then what else I'm rocking today is the biochip. Huge shout out to Cyberpunk Mertz Bass over there in Italia. Sitting on top of the theory on DNA 75C Squonk. So what's up? Next, and last but not least, the legendary, the one and only, Fuchai, Fuchai Squonk. With the wicked sitting on top, with the ninja style eyes. See it? Yep, let's do it. <clears throat> Alright guys, so what we're going to be looking at is statistics, like I said. So let's look up the first statistics, and that will be underage smoking statistics now this doesn't this isn't <clears throat> excuse me this isn't uh, vape related this is just traditional or as some would call it analog cigarettes <clears throat> okay so right now if you can see it right here it's gonna say each day nearly 6,000 children under the age of 18 uh, start smoking of these, nearly 2,000 will become permanent smokers, regular smokers, everyday sm Okay, so that last sentence is very important. Approximately 90% of smokers begin smoking before the age of 21. Now, this is especially crucial to someone like myself. I started smoking probably around the age of 16, 17, um, maybe even a little bit earlier, you know what I mean? 15, 16, 17. I didn't become a permanent smoker till about... I, I want to say around, you know, 18 is when I started smoking, you know, constantly, every day, getting people to buy packs of cigs for me, or even before that, I would say, okay, so let's just say 16, 17, I, I really did become a permanent smoker, and, you know, vaping wasn't around at that time. Uh, by the time I was 18, they had um, the blue cig, I don't know if you remember that, it is a cig alike, but it, it's nothing like <clears throat> uh, the traditional... Uh, vape pods that you have now. They do still have those, but back then the blue the blue e-cig was revolutionary because it was the first mass marketed in my in my opinion it was the first mass marketed cig alike. And and I remember buying one because I really wanted to quit smoking. Now at that time I'd only been smoking for a year, so it wasn't like I wanted to quit yet, you know? So I, I tried them, they weren't for me. Now Enough being said, but, you know, that's just the thing. That is true. If you're going to start smoking, it's normally before the age of 18. And it, it was cigarettes that I stole from my mom that, you know, every time we'd get a little couple drinks in, you'd be partying with your friends, go steal a pack, go steal a cigarette out of the pack, smoke it. Oh, I'm so cool. That kind of shit. So if you can relate to that, comment down below. Tell your story how you became a smoker because I'm sure it's similar, you know. So, like I said, let's look at some statistics don't know if you guys are going to be able to see it. It didn't look like it was coming up appropriately. Um, okay, so this this right here is what kills me when it comes to, uh, you know, the government wanting to ban vaping. Right here alone, cigarettes contain 4,800 chemicals, 69 of which are known to cause cancer. 90% of lung cancer deaths, deaths, approximately 80 to 90% of COPD, which... My mother herself suffers from COPD from smoking cigarettes for over 40 years. <clears throat> so, you know, each day it says nearly 6,000 children under the age of 18 start smoking. Uh, of these, nearly 2,000 will become regular smokers. I did say that a little bit earlier. Uh, if current tobacco use patterns persist, uh, an estimated 6.9, 6.4 million children will die prematurely from smoking-related deaths. So when you hear that kind of thing... Is there is there truly an epidemic of vaping? Because this is traditional cigarettes. So when it comes to this epidemic, 
where is the epidemic truly? Because it seems like kids have been smoking for a long time. And it's cigarettes, not just vaping. Now, I would never want an underage person to smoke or vape. But the lesser of the two evils would be... Uh, I'm going to let you decide that. So, let's go down a little bit further. And these are all things that I'm sure you guys are well aware of. It's just statistics that, that hit center for me are the COPD type deals because my mother is on oxygen a lot of the time because of that and it kills me to see how demonized vaping becomes when the statistics of smoking cigarettes are right in front of your face now I don't know who I'm trying to reach with this video this is just a vlog me kinda of putting out my my perspective on things okay guys so let's look at these statistics right here this is I'm trying to look for uh, you know the statistics of underage vaping now this is adolescent uh, tobacco use among youth now keep in mind a lot of these studies they lump everything into one so right here you're looking at 27.1 percent of the youth are using some type of tobacco product that is not just vaping so it starts down with pipe tobacco which is going to be the least I mean that's you know what kid do you see out of here puffing on some goddamn pipe? I mean, come on. But I guess there is some some pimp out there with a the pipe. Salute ya, but you should be 18 or older to do that, son. So, looking at that, 1.1% of youth uh, are using a pipe tobacco. That is, you know, 1.1% of how many. Uh, it says, current past 30-day use of e-cigarettes went up among middle school students from 2011 to 2018. But a lot of the time, they don't tell you that these kids were already smoking cigarettes. So, that fact is always left out. Now, do I think that, that that's something that should be mentioned? I do. I think that you just can't say that kids jump from one to the other because most likely, most of the time, cigarettes are more available in your home at that time. Now, the thing that about these statistics that's skewed and what I was telling you about, these are all percentages of use in 30-day periods now some of these people may have just tried it but they did not continue to use so that's something you got to keep in mind when you see these percentages these graphs and in the bigger issue right here is 8.1 percent of students are still smoking but that that you never see that blasted in your face on everyday on everyday media that cigarettes are the devil that cigarettes are gonna you know blow up in your face well cigarettes won't blow up in your face but you get what I'm saying you know cigarettes are not demonized as much yes you see your occasional commercial where they'll be smoking a cigarette and then they'll have another kid be like you shouldn't do that I'm gonna tell on you that kind of shit but nowhere near the amount that vaping gets when it comes to the youth but what kills me is this next stat. But before I talk about that stat, actually, nearly one in every 20 middle school students, 4.9%, reported that they use electronic cigarettes in the past 30 days. Now, that statement is very vague because you can say you used it as in you just tried it, which they shouldn't be. Okay, I agree. They should not be using it or trying it. But that doesn't mean that they're consistently using it. That is a very vague statement in this in this graph in general in this study in general is not it's just kind of vague but nearly one in five high school students 20.8 percent reported in 2018 that they used electronic cigarettes in the past 30 days now again they used it in the past 30 days but that doesn't mean that they continually use it that's not what that's saying that does not say that they they binge used it it does not say any of that it just says that they basically tried it in my opinion this vague statement is what is what I would get from that. So let's go on to what they have to say about cigarettes. 2011-2018, uh, the past 30 days, cigarette smoking went down among middle school students. Nearly one in every 50 middle school students, 1.8, reported that they smoked cigarettes in the last 30 days. About two of every 25 high school students reported uh, smoking in the last 30 days, a decrease from 2011 by 15.8%. Now, it's a decrease because kids aren't smoking like they used to which is good when I grew up in the 90s you know everybody smoked I swear if you walked anywhere everybody smoked my sister smoked my mom smoked everybody smoked 
you don't see it as much as it's not as as publicized as it used to be. So therefore, it goes down. Um, in 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 the case of of vaping. It's a newer thing. Of course, if you're a parent, you should be watching your kid. You should be telling them, you should be instilling in your kid what they want, what you want from them. Now, if it came to me, like I said, if I saw my kid smoking a cigarette or I saw my kid vaping, I would be angry at both, but I'd be a little bit less angry with, I'll let you decide on which one. But anyways, let's go down to tobacco product use. And actually, I do want to show you just the graph in general of there was a timeline, if, if I can find it. it, it went from the 90s to now, and it's just, it's, it's gone down, you know, but here's a graph overall tobacco use, any tobacco product, girls 24%, boys 29%, overall 27.1%, electronic cigarettes 20.8%, cigarettes 8.1%, so either of these numbers are not good, but it, again, just because it's 20.8% doesn't mean that they're continually vaping. It just means that they tried it. So you got to really keep that in mind when you see these skewed studies on vaping and tobacco use. So that being said about that, that's, that's just the charts I wanted to show you and some of the studies that are always skewed against vaping and they make it look that much worse. So I want to show you statistics of underage drinking so right here you'll see and look I know there's a lot of people before I even get into this topic that don't think that those two should be compared well it's hard to not be compared when when everything is being based on uh, the kids the kids are getting these vapes the children are getting these vapes well let's take a look at what else these children are getting into Excessive drinking is responsible for more than 4,300 deaths among underage youth each year. And the cost, it costs the U.S. $24 billion in economic cost in 2010 alone. So let's look at some more recent studies because, I mean, when it comes to drinking, there's flavors and you can't get away from it. There's whipped cream, there's cherry, there's apple, sour apple. Trust me, there is. And I remember when I was younger as, you know, probably just starting high school, Sour Apple just came out with Smirnoff. Smirnoff Sour Apple came out. And as a kid, you're like, man, that sounds good. So we drank that. And I remember being sicker than I'd ever been in my life. So like I said, excessive drinking is responsible for more than 4,300 deaths a year. So let's go to 2017. Uh, 30% drank some amount of alcohol. And this is, again, in the th past 30 days. Now, this doesn't mean those kids are addicted to alcohol. It means that they have tried it. They have given it a sip or a, you know, swig, if you will. So 14% of those youth binge drink. That is a real stat. If you were to say that 14% of students binge vape, but that wasn't in the study. 6% drove after drinking alcohol. These are all underage youths. Remember this. 17% rode with a driver who had been drinking alcohol. So let's look at the list of problems associated with underage drinking. This whole list right here. Now you're going to say, well, what does this have to do with vaping? The hypocrisy in this world of trying to save the children from things that they don't need to get their hands on. Alcohol is a billion dollar business. You're never ever going to see uh, the government, well they did one time, the prohibition. They did attempt to get rid of alcohol, but now it is big business. So you will never see them try to fight an alcohol company, but yet all these issues are happening with the youth. And there's no epidemic when it comes to alcohol use among um, you know, the youth. So what's up with that? I know this is a weird video for me. I, I just been thinking about a lot of things. But, you know, when it comes to all these issues that come from drinking, and this is all documented stuff for underage drinking, but yet vaping is what's going to kill our youth. It's the epidemic that's going to bring down our youth. Right here, there were approximately 1,900 emergency room visits from ages 12 
221 in 2013. And as I'm sure that number has either, you know, leveled off or either gone down or up a little bit by now, it's just the fact that what what's what's the answer? What is the what's what's the uh, where does vaping go from here? Because you see what alcohol does. You see all the issues. Thirty percent. That's higher than than vaping among youths. Fourteen percent binge drink. Six percent uh, drove after drinking. Those are real lifetime issues. Those are real things that can affect you for the rest of your life. And that's right down at CVS, right over at Rite Aid, wherever you're at. You can go buy a bottle of alcohol. But vaping is the epidemic. So if there's one thing I want to leave you with after watching this video, this is my first time ever making a video like this where I'm kind of reading off of the computer and showing myself. I will get better over time. So if there's something I want to leave you with right now, and it's something that makes me angry, this is called an epidemic. This rainbow sherbet liquor is not an epidemic. That is allowed. That is allowed for all the kids to get their hands on and to possibly drink, but that's not an epidemic. So I'm not angry. This video is not in malice. I am angry, actually, but this video is not in any type of malice. It is simply to prove a point that there are far worse things that our, your children could be doing. Now, I don't think that they should be vaping. I sure as hell don't think they should be smoking. But the statistics prove that most underage kids drink. So what's worse for your kids? Where, where, where should the government really be looking? You know, when you have things like Cheetos on top of your Kentucky Fried Chicken sandwich, but vaping is bad. People have diabetes from the food they eat, all the sugar. And I'm not saying that having diabetes is your problem. I'm not saying that it is a bad thing to have it. I'm just saying there's far worse things for your body out there other than vaping. No one has ever said that vaping is 100% safe, but it is definitely far safer than, than smoking cigarettes. And I will attest to that. Um, you know, at the end of this vlog, I think that I will put some links down to all this, all the statistics and studies about it. But do remember, when you're watching and you're looking at statistics of vaping and smoking, a lot of those studies are skewed in the way to make vaping look bad. But, you know, like I said, at the end of the day, as adults, we have a decision. We should be allowed to have a decision. If I want to vape Blue Slushy Tropical or Milkshake, or Tropical Blast, or Blue Slushy. As an adult, I should be allowed to make that decision. I should be allowed to decide what I want to put in my body. I should be allowed to decide what I want to vape, if I want to vape. And if it's flavored, to be honest with you, and if you're not a vapor and you don't understand, you're trying to get away from the bad taste of cigarettes. You're trying to get away from the chemical exposure of cigarettes. At first, when I began to vape, I did use uh, tobacco flavors, but I can't anymore. I can't smoke. If I go back, if I can't vape flavors, I, I guess I'll go back to smoking. But the thing is, I don't want that. I already feel better. I exercise more daily. I can do the things that I used to do before I smoked. And I think that's something that goes in the wayside is the adults that want to get away from smoking it's the people that need vaping to get away from smoking that have tried everything that smoke that two packs three packs a day that need that higher nicotine because of that and if you're going to try to say that the reason that vaping is so bad that there's an epidemic with the kids well truly think about some statistics go look at some statistics and just you know just educate yourself on different things but, you know, that being said, guys, this was my M-Vlog uh, Volume 2, and uh, hopefully more in the future. If you like this style of video, let me know below. I, I know I was a little bit everywhere in this video, but I just wanted to kind of dip my foot in this, this style of video doing, in this style of vlogging. So, that being said, guys, I do appreciate it. Um, you know, tonight is Monday. We will have PAL702 tonight with me, myself, Eric the Vaping uh, Politician. Mr. William himself from Cooper's Vaping View, 
Uh, yeah, come join us tonight, guys. This was Mvlog V2. Let me take a quick little puffski. And I'm out. Actually, I'm back. Make sure you subscribe. Hit that bell on the bottom because YouTube, uh, they've demonized vaping to where I can't get you guys to even see my videos. Um, they demonetize me, of course, because I'm just, I guess, evil. My videos are not family friendly yet girls twerking all over good dudes faces is family friendly which you know everybody likes to see a good twerker now and then don't get me wrong but it's family friendly but vaping is not friendly to anybody i guess so that being said guys thank you for the support on the channel i do appreciate every single one of you um yeah and see you later that's not what i say let's do this